Hello everybody and welcome to the video, my name is Midway and I hope you're having a wonderful day, I sure am. And today I bring you a very damn powerful build that's actually better than what I was already talking before about and the one that I'm using right now. We're gonna be switching to it right now and it's gonna be the PvE beast that Hunter already is of course. But now we're gonna be talking about an even better build that I haven't covered yet and that is the Arrow God build. Now I know for a while I was talking about... Shadow Hunter being the better option here offensively, but Arrow God is actually even stronger when it comes to pure damage. But we will also talk about everything else to make this work pretty damn nice and strong and all around it just be just extremely damn strong. So we'll cover everything about this build as well as just making the switch now to Arrow God, right? So why is Arrow God better than it is uh, to play Sacred Hunter? Well, basically simply because you can just uh, increase your damn combo damage by so damn much and also as you might read the active skill on hunters increases the combo damage right so if you're focusing on a whole damn lot of combo as well as everything boosting your combo damage it's a lot easier to get a very high amount of combo and therefore just benefit a lot more from that extra combo damage once you have all the good stuff that the arrow god does right so if we go check the arrow god we will see that it comes with an extra 140 percent increased combo damage right so that on itself is just pretty damn I'm insane right obviously everything else of course is also nice but it really just comes down to focusing on boosting your combo damage and benefiting a lot more from that than trying to go for both skill and combo right we will still go for those two skills but combo is going to be the king right so we'll just reset this and quickly evolve ourselves up to an arrow god right so we'll evolve once we'll choose archer again now that being said of course this is uh, going to be focused on uh, what's it called actually it's the uh, the one below right it's the wind crossbow right so um pvp wise uh warrior is still the king right so that's not being contested whatsoever and uh, when it comes to pve damage straight up just pve damage um, in this case, Aragod is the king, right? So here we go. We are now in Aragod and we're going to be building everything around it, right? So just starting talking about stats, right? Of, as we mentioned, we are still focusing on very high combo, which is easier to get because of the baseline extra combo we get from the early skills, right? So both versions of Hunter do have the extra combo. So we will go for that massive amount of combo and then we'll try to also get as high of a crit rate as we can, right? Trying to get as like 70% higher than that combo is gonna be insane and not that hard to do actually if you're focusing properly on your stats and then also getting a decent amount of crit rate balancing between those two not trying to get them to the same point because crit rate is really much harder to get um, based on that the fact that we got that passive skill that gives us a lot combo but yeah we will try to also get crit rate as high as we can that's gonna be the two stats we're gonna be searching for on our gear we should definitely try and get that it's going to be a lot better to get a lot of combo on your gear that it is to just get a higher tier piece of gear right so yeah should definitely always try and focus on first and foremost get that combo then get that crit rate as well and then try and balance it out as well with some of the stuff like stun evasion all that good stuff is going to be pretty damn nice but first of all it's going to come the damage and that is going to be get your combos and get your crit rate up right so let's now talk a little bit about the uh, skills right so skill wise we're going to be covering it a little bit between what pvp and pv or rather what uh, pay to win and a free to play player could kind of afford right so we will obviously uh, discuss uh, what the easy version of all this build is going to be to get and then we'll go for the best options right so um good options for a free to play player are going to be to go for speed search right really easy to get it's going to be increasing our attack speed which is going to be in turn allowing us to do more basic attacks and get more combo right so that's going to be a pretty accessible way of getting a whole lot of damage without spending any money for sure then shroom shield is going to be um a very very strong defensive option i'm going to be using this pretty much always so long as we don't have a better option uh, that being much more inclined to uh pay to situation or just getting lucky with a gadget to be fair but yeah shroom shield will come in pretty nicely you will find out that uh, as an archer our job here or our difficult here is really going to be to survive um rather than doing a lot of damage so this will uh, just straight up just come in handy in every situation pvp pvp especially in pv to be fair 
Now there is going to be a whole lot of other options here, for example, the charge will be a decent one for increasing our basic attack damage, but there's going to be better stuff down the line right here. So of course, we're going to be having uh, Durian Bomb increasing, uh, or rather slowing the target, uh, the, the target's movement speed by 40%, so we are just struggling to survive, which as I mentioned in PvE, to get to a higher stages is usually going to be the case by playing an Archer, um, using stuff like this, for example, if you're not using the Snail, which we'll talk about that in a little bit more, you could use this to slow the target by a little while that's quite handy just in case you're facing any uh, melee bosses easy breezy also kind of does the same uh, job it's going to be reducing the attack of the target by 20 percent really so it's just allowing you to survive a little bit longer of course dealing some damage but it's giving you a breathing room so you can uh, just do more damage while you are not dying uh, to be fair that's that's really the whole point here also reducing the attack speed of targets really damn strong so between those three options you should kind of use some of those if you're struggling to survive now there's going to be also other defensive options like for example coin bomb increasing the basic attack damage by 35 percent pretty damn strong option here is going to be smoke bomb you have access to that it's going to be your your pretty much go to here it's going to be giving you so much damage you can boost this with other sources but that 30 percent increase on the damage taken by the enemies is just insane right so those are some of the options here now more defensive stuff for example uh we can go for the disarm here for three seconds that's a whole lot of time and that is going to be coming in handy in every situation once again pvp pve another option would be dazzled for the stun so between those options we will come up with a build that's going to be balanced enough to allow us to survive in pve so we don't die and then allowing us to as well have enough damage so we will always be able to uh, switch between stuff in order to be able to get more damage or just get more survivability if we do need so then Wild Gast will also be pretty damn strong, increasing all attack by 50%, 15%, not just basic attack damage. This is all attack, also increasing your uh, pet's damage, also increasing your uh, skill damage, right? So that's also a pretty damn strong option. Uh, Wild Gust, pretty damn offensive, pretty damn good, right? So how do we come up with a build that's actually going to work for us, right? As I mentioned, it's going to be coming down to what really uh, you just find that works, works best for you. In some situations, one skill will be better. In some other situations, you will not have access to all the skills we covered, right? So you will try and make it work for you. And uh, yeah, well, trying to put together some of these options that I mentioned to you will be pretty damn strong. Another another option you have here is that if you are really uh, taking somehow a lot of damage at the beginning of a fight and you are being bursted down, switching Shroom Shield for Nature's Renewal could also be an option. Of course, you could also combine it with a Panda to increase your regeneration. Right, but I would rather go for Swim Shield that's going to have a lower cooldown. It's going to be uh, just giving you that 20% uh, shield, which 20% uh, max HP shield, which is going to be very, very, very important. And the healing will just get um, basically wasted if you're going to be using all the attacks automatically, like, like pretty much everybody is, right? When you start a battle, that ability is going to be used. And um, oftentimes, you might not waste the whole amount, but if you already have the shield, um, you're going to have a little bit of time where you will be full HP. And then these uh, Nature Renewal will be will kick in right so that effect will be wasted unless you use all your skills manually right so that's why i'm inclined to not use it and instead use stuff like disarm to provide you with more breathing room increase your damage with smoke bomb speed surge and wild gas and stuff like that right so yeah um, it's not a set in stone thing, don't just go for the setup that I mentioned right now, try and play around with the skills that I talked about, it's options here and you should try and go for your, what you need at a time, you're lacking damage, maybe go for more offensive options, you are lacking just the defensiveness and surviving, go for something that allows you to survive a little bit longer. Now of course in an ideal world we would have everything we need here, so of course that would include things like Windborne Arrow, pretty damn strong clone strike, allows you to survive for a long time and also gives you a little bit of damage with that clone, but really it's just about surviving longer. So if you had access to Clone Strike, do, would definitely be do, using that. Blitz Assault, also very, very damn strong. It will give you that immunity uh, for a little while, right? So those options all are there if you have access to the skills. Uh, Blade Pierce, pretty damn bad. Uh, World Snare, pretty good if you are also combining the uh, combining it with the uh, the Relic, which increases the duration of it. Uh, but for, uh, yeah, somehow kind of more of a PvP option, but also viable in PvE as a, just a more offensive option. Just like I mentioned before, if you need more offense, go for the offensive options. If you need more healing or more surviving, go for those other options. And uh, yeah, that's really where I would go. I would go for a Clone Strike if I could, Windborne Arrow, Blitz Assault if I had access to all of that i would go for smog mom pretty much and then i would go for something like disarm or the shield for for just straight up surviving if that's what you are struggling with right so what about pals right pals 
Well, we will remove some of these that I was using before. We'll remove this one as well. Uh, we'll keep that one and then we'll we'll talk about them as we go as well. Right, so starting from the bottom here, um, we are going to try and get more attack speed, right? That's what we want, so we get more combos. So using the bird is going to be exactly what we want for that. Um, the sprite is also going to be pretty coming, coming in pretty handy, just getting more of the active skills. You want more of those, so yeah, the Hydro Sprite is just straight up pretty damn good. Uh, those two I kind of would always use. Now, we also have the banana here, which is going to give us 5% combo, and 5% combo is actually quite a lot. Now, if you have access to something like the event banana, would actually be a lot better, right? Combo damage plus 100%, that's just insane, but this is locked behind an event which is already over. It will come back at some point, but for now, that's not there. Um, then the bunny also pretty damn strong, allowing you to survive a little bit longer, giving you that increased crit rate. Um, if you have access to it as well, also behind the paywall of the events, those two are now gone for a little while, at least in my server, right? So those two, uh, I would go for them if I could, but I can't, uh, I can not get them right now, so that's what it is. Now, defensive options here for PvE, and in particular, um, reducing the movement speed with the snail, like we mentioned before, with uh, that other skill that also reduces the movement speed of your enemies, is also always a way of just allowing you to survive a little bit longer, since the boss is going to take more time to start even damaging you. If I had access to this stuff, I would go for the octopus and I would go for the dragon here. And then I would also go for the crocodile, right? I would combine all those and I would put together a massive pay to win team, but I don't have access to those. So we'll just wish for them, right? So we can also use the deer here. 15% damage resistance is a whole lot. Once again, if you are lacking damage, you, you have more offensive options elsewhere. But this is a pretty damn strong defensive option. As another defensive option, as we mentioned, Panda, also pretty cool if you're using Nature's Renewal, um, could come in pretty handy, but otherwise we would go for other stuff, for example. What else do we have here? The Eggplant, pretty damn strong as well, all that crit rate, um, even though we also want combo rather, but instead crit rate is, is still pretty much something we want for sure, so that's something that I would also go for if I had it. I don't, so that's unfortunate. Now, the uh, Snow Sprite, reducing the enemy's attack speed by 12%, pretty damn strong option as well. Reducing the enemy's attack speed is just, uh, once again, allowing us to survive for longer, so we are uh, pretty damn good with that. Now, the chicken here also giving us the basic attack damage is decent, is nice, offensive option, we could play into it, we could choose it, but yeah, depends once again whether you are struggling to survive or you are just uh, lacking damage, so play around with that stuff. And as we go lower in the tiers, we got um, exactly the same options, really, there will be um, replicas for this, um, these different pals. Uh, with higher effects as you go higher in the tiers. Now, using two of the same kind of uh, PAL, even though you can equip them, it's not going to stack their uh, damage, it's not going to stack their effects, really. Uh, whatever the effects are, they're not going to be able to be combined. So, unfortunately, you cannot do so, right? So, don't try and do it. It's just going to be wasting uh, potential and capacity on, on, on your PALs. You're just going to be wasting a PAL spot, basically, right? So, we covered that. Now, let's move on to quickly to Prayer Statue here. You want to be getting basically everything combo. I know I have a little bit of crit here. I'm switching away from it as now as, as soon as I can. But go for combo. You can also get a little bit of uh, a global attack as well if you if you happen to get a very, very good rank on it. Right now, I am trying to build a new page here. Hopefully, I can get some of those SS uh, global uh, combo damage. But otherwise, yeah, just try to focus and get as uh, high, of a uh, high of a tier in global combo as you can. That's what we're going for. Boosting our combo as much as we can. Play into that active ability that we mentioned about uh, mentioned before with the arrow god just having a lot of extra combo built into it right so that is pretty damn simple now moving on to souls souls i i was building pretty badly into them and you can actually reset the uh soul here if you want to be uh, getting back all the mats you spent into any of the red souls you can just go ahead and click here and spend some diamonds to just get all that you spent on them just get it back and be able to spend it somewhere else right so you should be focusing on getting uh, the combo damage as high as you can as well as some crit those two combined should be 
you well, your, your only go-to's here. You shouldn't try and build anything else unless you are really lacking some survivability. Then you could spend some points into the extra HP here. But my extra HP one is actually pretty low level, right? If you happen to have a little bit of a rainbow like I have right now with some of the other lower tier uh, souls leveled up, you can just scrap them. You will get uh, the full amount of materials back. You will just need to replace them at some point once you get it back, right? Once you get a new copy of uh, maybe a lower tier or whatever just get a, uh, another copy of the same soul then you can just uh, sell the one you have and just replace it and get all those good mats back so you can spend into what's actually going to give you more power it's going to be the combo damage here and the crit damage bonus rate uh, really that's what you should be focusing on now, Relics, uh, we're going to be playing a little bit around with uh, the extra combo mask as well as with the extra crit rate mask. Depending on where we're standing with our stats, if we want a little bit more uh, combo, then we would go for that, uh, that, that mask. If we want a little bit more crit, we would go for that mask. Now, when do we want more of which? It's going to depend. If you got around 50%, 50, or actually 50% combo, then uh, in, in your crit rate is suffering a little bit, maybe you would be uh, trying to switch around then. But ideally, you would try to keep around that much at, at least like about 50% combo go a little bit higher if you can then try and make the switch with a mask on to, onto your crit rate so you can get it um, somewhere around 30% 40% but ideally you just want to get like as much combo as you can get like 50 60 70% if you can afford it and then try and get your crit rate high as well and just try and switch around your mask if you see that one of the stats is really lagging behind and you can afford to do that switch so that the other stat doesn't really fall behind that much right now I'm using the combo one and my stats are uh, are just as follows. I got a whole lot of combo, right? So I could make the switch on the mask and try and get a little bit more crit rate. That really comes down to some testing. It's going to depend on your account at that time. Now, what it, when it comes to the uh, blue relics, I would go for the kite if I had it. I don't, so unfortunately, I cannot do that. Uh, we could go for the sprite pile here. Uh, just increasing its attack speed by a little bit because we are using it. I uh, could also go for the uh, snails and hydrosphere if we are using any of those. Really, it just comes down to what you are using. Are we using any of the dragon turtle lizard? You can also do that. But I would definitely go for the kite if I was able to. Just gonna be giving you some more damage, really. And since I am using the uh, one the sprite right now, I'll just try and, and figure out which one I really want. I'm not using the um, the. Uh, I'm not just the chicken anymore. That's uh, gonna be uh, that's a lot more of a warrior option here. Uh, the sprite palace I mentioned, I already have it. Snail hydrosphere. I'm gonna be using uh, kind of both, right? So maybe I will go for that. But yeah, I'll study this a uh, little bit more. Of course, all these uh, percentage values depend on the level of the relic. So if you increase the level of these relics, the percentage value on the extra attack or the extra damage or all that stuff, the extra attack speed, that's gonna be increased. So that also uh, plays into it. Um, same kind of goes for the purple one. Are you using the panda because you're using uh, that uh, extra regeneration with nature's renewal? Maybe go for the panda. Are you using the snow sprite? Then go for that if you want to have a little bit more damage on that big ass snowball. Cactus pal, I wouldn't really use it. I would use it if I was a warrior. Now I've been using it for a, lot, a while, but I'm switching away from it. I'm not going to be switching the, uh, using the cactus pal, right? So that's kind of just going into the bean. Cat and deer pal, not too great. I'll switch away from the deer as soon as I find that I have enough survivability and go for a bit more offensive option. This one is really only increasing the damage of the pals, so kind of lackluster. As well as the dog and fox, I'm not using any of those. But if I was using the octopus, I would probably be using that one, but I don't have it. So, yep, yeah, there we go. As you, Whenever you have some of those uh, pals, you're using some of them, just, just really try and combo it together with whatever um, whatever the, the relics are going to be that boost that uh, the effect of that uh, those pals. So when it comes to the defensive options here on the yellow books, uh, the best option really is going to be the immunity for PBE, allowing you to have a little bit of a breathing room, just ignoring, completely ignoring the damage from some of the attacks. Um, the, uh, the increased resistances and the health restoration uh, will be uh, not that great, to be fair, when you can just straight up take no damage for a little while, right? So, um, yeah, I would just go for the immunity book here if I was going to be choosing a uh, defensive option. For an offensive option, really, it just comes down to whether you are doing PvE. In this case, I would go for the increased boss damage. Or uh, in the case of the flame book, well, if you were going to do PvP, that's what you would choose because you're not fighting bosses. Instead, you are fighting uh, other players, right? So those are not bosses, then this book doesn't actually apply. 
Now, when it comes to the orange ones here, are we using some of the skills we are uh, going to be pairing this together with, right? So the uh, time statue is going to be one of those that you will probably always want to use because of the smoke bomb. Increasing the effect of it is going to mean increasing the damage bonus that you get from smoke bomb, right? So that's going to be pretty damn offensive, pretty strong. Also, are you using Dazzled, right? Um, Dazzled is the uh, skill that... Um, um that uh what's it called it uh, stuns the enemy right so can we uh get a bigger effect on that well uh, we could try and choose to play here uh, with uh, that relic right uh, we are on this one actually um, but if we are playing with this arm, that also works, right? So, yeah, it really depends. Are you combining some of these, are you using some of these uh, attacks? In the case of the, the this one, this arm, a smoke bomb, time statue, probably you're always going to be using those two skills. Maybe not always, but for the most part, for most of the game, you should try and be using them, right? So time statue is going to be most likely your best choice. But if you don't happen to have some of those um, skills, then, well, maybe try something else. Like, for example, if you uh, don't really have any better options, you could try and go for the energy statue just because of the increased damage on Shroom Shield, you're always going to have that as well. Um, some more defensive options going to be here with Durian Bomb, Easy Breeze, and Take It Slow. Those are some of your choices of skills for some more defensiveness in PvE. Um, then Coin Bomb, increasing the effect of Coin Bomb. Actually, this was the duration. Yeah, I completely mistaken that. That was the duration. The uh, increased effect, it's actually the Crystal Statue, which will make Coin Bomb do a little bit more damage. But Coin Bomb actually increases your attack damage, right? It's not the combo damage. Um, yeah, basic attack damage, right? So we, we kind of rather not use Coin Bomb. We'd rather use something else, like, for example, Wild Gust. Um, but yeah, Coin Bomb could also be something you choose to use if you don't happen to have some other skills. So if you want to be using that, increasing the effect of Coin Bomb will, of course, be pretty damn strong as well. But yeah, I would rather use this uh, Time Statue and combine that with uh, this Arm and Smoke Bomb if I could. And I'm going to be using that, of course. Uh, I already have it, of course. So what about the red ones? Red ones, well, do we happen to have uh, any of these skills, right? Do we have Wild Gust? If we're using it, then could be decent. Um, are we? Do we have Clone Strike? If I had Clone Strike, I would probably be using this as well. Pretty damn strong. I was using Blade Pierce before. That's why I'm, I have this one equipped right now. Uh, Blitz Assault, also pretty strong. If you happen to have that one, of course, that's also uh, an immortal skill. Pretty damn hard to get. Are we using Windborne Arrow as well? That's um, I would be using that as well if I had Windborne Arrow. Right? It really all just comes down to do you have that skill? And most of the time, if you are a free to play player, in the case of the Red Relics, it's just going to be a no-no. But yeah, try and just find something you can actually benefit from. And if that is the case, well, just try and use that. So... Uh, we covered pals, we covered skills, we covered the statue, we talked about the soul, we talked about the relics, we pretty much talked about everything. Now, just as a bit of a cherry on top, if you happen to have any of the uh, morph options onto your weapon, well, here, uh, the better choice, I would say, would be to be getting the gun. Um, that is, of course, you would kind of just always want to unlock every single one of these uh, skins because you get the artifact effect on itself. But yeah, if you were actually to be using one, I would use the gun. And for the mount here, I would try and use the uh, the uh, Pyro Breaker also. Not that hard to get if you are playing any of the events properly. Uh, if you have the calendar available to you and you know when events are going to be happening, the rush events, so try and save up on, on mats and anything that's going to be uh, taking a part on that event so that you can try and rank high. Of course, if you pay, you are going to be having a, an easier time doing so. But you can just rank pretty high as a free-to-play player if you have proper uh, schedule and you you organize yourself properly so you can actually get some of the mats in order to buy yourself the mats, right? So the Pyro Breaker, pretty good option, as well as the Cloud Drifter, um, that 20% attack boost for 5 seconds, even though it comes with skill crits, um, eventually you will just get a skill crit and that that, uh, boost, uh, that attack boost is insane, but yeah, Pyro Breaker just guarantees you to just uh, get that increased crit damage, uh, and that, that is a whole lot of crit damage, right? So, of course, a pretty cheap option and pretty damn strong, really. So yeah, I think I'm not missing anything here, I think I've pretty much just covered everything and uh, I probably will just go ahead and now show you a little bit of what this build will do now if i haven't missed anything we should be just fine to try and tackle this and see how much damage we can do now i could kind of tell you what uh, how much damage i would do if i was using 
uh, the previous build. Of course, I could have also just uh, waited out and uh, not switched yet and uh, have a comparison here. But it's really going to come down to the fact that now I'm going to be able to survive a little bit longer. I should have switched into the disarm a little bit uh, before and uh, some of the relics as well just to allow me to survive for longer here. So, of course, we did a big bunch of damage. I think we have already played the uh, Blazing Cave, right? So we don't have access to that. But yeah, pretty damn strong build. Hopefully, I'll just go ahead and show you against uh, something like this, for example. I thought oh, it's actually just gone. It wasn't gone when I was here before trying to um, record this video. And uh, we'll just try and face this guy, and hopefully, I can survive it a little bit, a little bit longer. I'm probably gonna go on a spree here and just tackle a lot of these uh, chapters onto the campaign simply because i now increased my survivability by a whole lot and it really just comes down to that be able to be flexible with your build choose what you need at the right time so you don't get stuck if you get stuck with a build and you are too lazy to change it around or you just don't uh, know what to use instead then you will be doing less progress than you could potentially do so for the sake of pvp that's gonna be a whole different story you're gonna be trying to just uh, focus a lot more on um, a different set of skills and everything else basically your whole build will kind of have to change a little bit for pvp but yeah here we kind of covered the best stuff for a pve build really focused on the campaign to be fair and just trying to not die there will always be differences that's what's going to be better for every different scenario depending on whether the boss is arranged or not a ranged enemy and stuff like that so yeah hopefully you enjoyed that let me know in the comments down uh, on the comment section any questions anything you might want to tell me about this build or whatever whatever you want to tell me just let it down there in the description or the comment section rather uh if you're not, if you're not yet using aptoid also check it out it's going to be allowing you to get from a 15 uh, 10 percent alto away to a, up to a 35 percent um, extra value for your money really what's going to happen with aptoid is that whenever you try and make a purchase in the game you're going to be getting um or oh, well the the uh, app coins wallet uh, app is going to be opening up right so once you get it set it up uh you will be able to make the payments to the app coins wallet to the game and then you will be able to accumulate those bonuses that we talked about that extra value is going to be in the form of the app coins credits which then you can use to make the purchases for you instead of using your actual money right so it's like you're getting a discount for further purchases you make a, a purchase now and that means that you will have a 35 percent or whatever a 15 percent discount for the next purchase because you accumulated some extra value now now that bonus can increase by using stuff like my code is going to be down in the description or as well as on the screen you can use that on the app coins wallet and get an increase of five percent extra value from the get-go and then as you do more purchases within aptoid you will also get a bigger bonuses bigger rewards and be able to get more benefit out of using aptoid so yeah hopefully you enjoyed all that uh, there's going to be a guide on how to set everything up down in the description so check it out if you got any questions as well as yeah just ask me away on the comment section if you have any questions and yeah i'll be there for you hopefully you enjoyed that i'll see you in the next video bye, -bye. see ya